If we could talk to the animals, learn all their languages, maybe take an animal degree. If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Hello and welcome to Pet Watch, a monthly program about the Williamson County Animal Control and Adoption Center. I'm wearing my tuxedo shirt today because we're in the midst of the ASPCA $100,000 challenge this summer during the months of June, July, and August. And my special guest today is our director, Laura Chavaria. Hi, Laura. Hi, good morning. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, the challenge is something that uh, the shelter applied for and we'll be working on all summer long to save more lives. In fact, our motto is adopt a star and save a life. Um, it is summertime and we will be talking about the challenge as well as this hot weather. And I wanna start off the first part of our show talking about pet safety in the hot months. What is the most common problem that people have with, uh, especially dogs, mm -hmm. which get more exposure to outside temperatures than cats do? Um, what is the big problem with dogs in the summertime? The biggest problem that we're seeing, you know, we take in complaints from the field. Um, the biggest problem we're seeing is animals left in the car. Um, you never want to do that, even if it's only 70 degrees outside. Um, research has shown that 70 degrees outside means it's 100 and 110 in the car which is wow. a danger to the animal. Mm -hmm. So when in doubt, leave your animals at home. Um, another interesting um, threat, which I didn't learn about till this year, is screened windows and screened doors. People don't think that their animal could escape or fall out of a window, but we've been seeing that a lot lately as well. Wow, so you're saying that even though the outside temperature may be 70 degrees, that inside the car can reach 110 in mm -hmm. quite a short time. Mm -hmm. And of course, those are temperatures that are lethal with rolled up windows, even if you crack a window, mm -hmm. it doesn't really cool the car down. So I guess the best rule of thumb is don't leave your animal in the car um, any time of year. And Correct. it's a threat in the, in the freezing weather as well. Absolutely. If you have to take your dog somewhere, um, take them in with you or go to a drive through window where you can always watch your animal. Mm -hmm. Because like kids, a few minutes of uh, not watching an animal and locking them in a vehicle can be fatal, mm -hmm. fatal. So uh, we do get calls and we encourage the public to call if they see an animal locked in a hot vehicle to call us and we'll come out and investigate um, and stay by the car. Mm -hmm. And if that complaintive couldn't stay with the car, they can get us the driver's um, license number. That always helps. That way mm -hmm. if the car leaves, by the time we get there, we can still research it. Right, and I, if it's an imminent threat, just call 911 and mm -hmm. say you need animal control officer. So mm -hmm. uh, that should be common sense. <laughs> but hot weather affects dogs other than locking them in a vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, just taking them for walks. Uh, some breeds have more difficulty than others. Tell us about that. A lot of the dogs that have the smushed in faces, bulldogs, American bulldogs, it's harder for them to breathe no matter what the weather is. But when it's hot, they get overheated easily. So you wanna make sure you look for the warning signs, panting, excessive tiredness. Um, you wanna make sure that if you start seeing that, you find a shaded area, cool compress, um, things like that to avoid them overheating. And some dogs like uh, the play pools, the mm -hmm. baby pools. You can get a plastic mm -hmm. tub or a plastic um, baby pool and put it in the yard and, and it'll keep your dog cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have them jump in and lay down and roll in it at the <laughs> shelter and then, and then get out and run around a little more. Um, and it is should be common sense to not jog with your dog and because dogs are so loyal that mm -hmm. they will jog beyond the point of being able to cool themselves, which is panting. Mm -hmm. So um, panting is a sign they, their systems are cooling, but if it goes on, what, for more than 10 minutes, then mm -hmm. you got a problem? Correct. Okay. Seek vet, vet care. Um, another important thing during the summer months is to have regular vet visits. Make sure your animals are on heartworm preventative because heartworms can cause issues with your animals. Another interesting um, thing that I researched the other day was not to shave your animal. You can trim the hair, but you don't want to shave it because that layer of hair um, keeps them from getting sunburnt. So I didn't know that until recently. I've heard of a dog getting sunburned, and I guess it was a case where it had been shaved. Mm -hmm. So a reputable groomer should know that. Mm -hmm. And it's good to maybe give the long-haired dogs a little relief from the heat 
um, because the more hair they have, the hotter they may get. Mm -hmm. But don't shave them is what you're saying. Correct. Just cut it short. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, there are many dogs that um, stay outside all day, every day, and that's fine mm -hmm. if a dog has adequate shelter. Correct. And one of the things we enforce is adequate shelter in this county. Uh, what qualifies? What does a dog need if it, it were to stay in an outside area all day? Shelter is three walls and a floor, as well as ventilation. So igloo houses are still good as long as there's ventilation. You never want to put a fan out there because that also poses a threat, but three walls, a floor, and ventilation. Ventilation is key. You want to put um, the house in shaded area or allow the animal to have access to shaded area and then appropriate food and water. Okay, and that water could need to be replenished. Mm -hmm. And it should be fresh water. Mm -hmm. um, and the best is tap water. Correct. Okay. Um, now there are dog popsicles nowadays <laughs> that some of the spo some of our little spoiled dogs get. Yes. Uh, there are things you can freeze um, that dogs can lick on, uh, like the polar bears at the zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they get big ice chunks to lick on, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the things that happens in the summer is we're all involved in more outside activities. And when that happens, we start swimming in swimming pools. We start going to beaches. We go to hotels and un take our animals to previously unfamiliar situations. Um, some of the hazards involved there could could really hurt an animal. Mm -hmm. um, when you have an outside par outside pool at your house, there are certain precautions you take for your children, and they should be taken for your pet as well. So what are some of the hazards of, that pool owners face uh, with the chemicals and the water? You want to make sure that you always have direct supervision on your animals. They could eat pool tabs, which is toxic, so you want to make sure you, you pick up anything, make sure the animal doesn't have access to it, and direct supervision, making sure that the animal doesn't fall in the pool. And again, overheating. If you're out swimming, make sure your animal's taking a break because if they're swimming, they could get overheated. Mm -hmm. So taking things slowly with them. And especially if you get a new a new pet. Mm -hmm. I, I, shot, I saw a program where a family had a pool and they adopted a new animal and the trainer came over and his first priority was teach the dog to, to get out of the pool. Mm -hmm. um, and the dog n had not, to their knowledge, it was a shelter dog, so who knows what the story was, but it didn't know how to swim, but it had an instinct for it. And so they spent like half a day just turning the dog to the steps mm -hmm. and then ended up you know popping him into the pool and making him swim out on his own so these are just things that people should think of um, pretty much the precautions you take with your children mm -hmm. you should take with your pets <laughs> I, I think um, they're common sense now the fourth of july sometimes poses a huge problem for dog owners because of the noise of fireworks in neighborhood even the smaller firecrackers in the neighborhood and things that people um, like to do on the 4th of July. So are we flooded with animals on 4th of July? Yes, it is our busiest time of year. Um, our recommendation is to leave your animals at home. Yes, we're going to barbecues, we're going to pool parties, but dogs react differently to fireworks. They may think they're a toy, they may be scared. Um, we've had people leave their dogs in fenced in areas, fireworks go off, the dogs either dig out or jump over the fence and then they come into the shelter. So mm -hmm. um, use precaution when, you, when you're when you going to go see fireworks. Leave your animals at home. They're in the air conditioning. I'm sure we would all like to stay in leave the them, AC. If, yeah, if, they're, if you know they're fearful, mm -hmm. especially leave them inside the house mm -hmm. with maybe some distracting noise in the background or whatever. It's better than having them jump the fence, which it, they can get very frightened yes. of a sudden noise. And in the county, there are a lot of fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, the city has some ordinances against it, but in the county, it's a, it's a huge problem. And we don't want our animal control officer to have to come get your pet mm -hmm. on the 4th of July just because you didn't think about it. Um, when you take a dog on a vacation, that's an interesting <laughs> proposition because a lot more of hotels mm -hmm. and of course rental units, um, if you go to the beach for a week and you take your dog, there are a lot of things you need to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, what about the heat and the pavement with a dog? You definitely don't want to leave an animal on the hot asphalt for too long. If you think about it, their paws are very sensitive and the blacktop is very hot. Think about it when you get out of a pool and you've walked barefoot, it's very, right. very hot and the, the paws are very sensitive. So don't take them on long walks. Um, just be very mindful of that. 
and sand holds mm -hmm. hazards for animals as well. Um, I, I, people that take a dog to a beach have a lot to think about, um, or any area where you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. And um, it's new for the animal, and mm -hmm. it may be stressful on them, so maybe the best um, plan would be to leave them with a dog sitter, or if you're really dedicated to taking them on vacation, take a crate in case they are scared, that way they have mm -hmm. that sense of security. Right, and think it through. When you stop to mm -hmm. eat lunch, and it's 100 degrees, you can't leave the dog in the car. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do? It's just a common sense um, matter of thinking through what your dogs you know, uh, need and mm -hmm. how you would care for them at home mm -hmm. is exactly how they should be cared for on the road. Now, a lot of people have barbecues outside in the summer. Um, grills pose a huge hazard uh, to animals, either gas grills, it's obvious a fire hazard, mm -hmm. um, especially when they have meat on them and you're letting the dog run around. Mm -hmm. um, that's something people don't think about. Uh, some of the smaller grills are easy to tump over. The charcoal grills especially mm -hmm. um, are lighter weight. And so I, I would encourage people, wouldn't you, to be careful. Mm -hmm. If you're having a barbecue, you wouldn't leave your child out there mm -hmm. and your dog may not be able to resist the temptation of a steak or a, or a hot dog. Again, it's about having the animal under direct supervision, treating okay. them like a child. <laughs> now, um, suppose that your dog does get in an emergency situation in the summer or any time of year. Um, you suspect your dog has eaten, has gotten in the pool. You've left the pool house door open, the storage door open, mm -hmm. and there's some powder on the floor, and you think your dog may have ingested some pool chemical or they've gotten near the grill and they've gotten burned. Um, what, locally, what are our options when our veterinary office might not be open at eight o'clock on the, the night of the 4th of July? We are very blessed to have a lot of um, after hours emergency cares, um, care facilities. The shelter actually uses Blue Pearl, which is open the off hours of what a normal vet is. So they're open on the weekends, on the holidays, you know, 12 o'clock at night they're open. Um, so I strongly encourage folks, if they have any concerns with their animals, to take them directly. Usually you want to call them ahead of time. Their phone number is actually 333-1212. That's, That's easy. We use them all the time, mm -hmm. so I have their no phone number memorized. But mm -hmm. give them a call, give them a heads up, and head on over there. And they're on Cool Springs? They're on, they're um, on Mallory Lane Mallory. Mm -hmm. at near Moores Lane, mm -hmm. the cor near the intersection of Moores Lane, behind uh, the BP station. Mm -hmm. Down the down that street, there's a vet. It's a veterinary office in the daytime, and it's also Blue Pearl Emergency Clinic. So, if uh, I would encourage people to look that number up, I've got a magnet from them mm -hmm. that I got at an event, and it's just on the refrigerator. I mean, your vet will if you call him. It's just like your family doctor. If it's an emergency, you need to go to an emergency facility. Correct. And the people at Blue Pearl are there 24/7. Um, there are also an emergency clinic in the Nashville area, but for mm -hmm. Williamson County residents, when time is of the essence, and a dog overheating, uh, we'll go back to that for a moment, mm -hmm. that is an emergency. Critical. Yeah, and we didn't. We talked about the short-nosed dogs, but we want to caution people with the larger breeds, uh, any of your large pit muscular dogs like mm -hmm. the pit bull mixes, uh, the bulldogs, your favorite, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, any of them that, and we've had them get overheated on walks around our property. Mm -hmm. So we have to caution our volunteers. Um, a dog is not more resilient than a human. So if you d wouldn't want to run for 10 minutes in the heat, the dog does not need to run. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have anybody to tell him drink drink more water. So uh, we've actually had the some of the heavier muscular mixes that we've had to watch mm -hmm. closely at the shelter. Well, I thank you for all those cautionary tales that we Absolutely. want people to have a good summer, but we don't want their pets to be injured in the process. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage them to keep all of those hazards in mind because new things do come about in the summer that don't happen the rest of the year. So we want to stay safe uh, and, ha and healthy with our pets. We'll be back in a moment to talk more about this summer's adoption challenge that we're involved in during the rest of July and August. <laughs> My book is Where the Sidewalk Ends. Um, I like this book because um, 
The poems in it are really funny, and um, I like the illustrations, and they make me laugh. Hello, and welcome back to Pet Watch. Today I'm talking with Laura Chavria, and we went over some of the summer hazards that might uh, come up for our cats and dogs this summer, and hopefully yours will stay safe because of some of the advice Laura gave us. Now this part of the show, we'd like to talk about the last year. Laura's been on board as our director for about one year. Correct. Um, and in that short time, uh, we made a lot of improvements at the shelter. Uh, we're now painted in a scheme of orange, green, and purple. Yes, brighter, happier colors. <laughs> Good, and that's to go along with the Meet Your Match program that we participate in. Tell us a little bit about that, what, sure. what those three colors mean. Sure. Um, Meet Your Match is an ASPCA-sponsored program, which we um, kind of ha have adapted for the past couple years. It's a way for us to score the animal um, based on their personality, a series of tests. So we have animals that are green, orange, or purple. So, for example, green could mean teacher's pet. Um, purple can mean couch potato. So we want to score the animal, and then when people come in, we score them based off of um, how they spend their day. So we're trying to guide them to an animal that meets their um, lifestyle, mm -hmm. something that'll be a good fit for both the animal and the adopter. And instead of our old application where a person sat down and answered some questions, we actually have an interactive uh, set of questions that we ask people. And our application is, has changed. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we ask is like, how do you spend your day? and how will your pet spend their day? So it brings about a thinking on the part of the person as to what they want in an animal and what they expect so that if they need a, a smaller uh, house, a house pet, that they don't get a huge dog that needs a lot of space to play in. It just doesn't make sense. To, so Meet Your Match hopefully does away with a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And we give people that questionnaire when they come in. Mm -hmm. And then we tell them, well, you're a green, so when you go back and look at the dogs, you might want to Look at the ones that are green. It's not totally 100% foolproof. Right. You can go outside the guidelines and we'll help you with that. It's just uh, a great educational tool and I think it, it provides an opportunity for us to have a conversation with them that's mm -hmm. open. You know, we're not judging them, we're not criticizing, but it's a good educational tool to make sure it's a good match. Yeah, and, and that makes sense because everybody ends up happy mm -hmm. and uh, the adjustment period is, is easier mm -hmm. if the animal conforms to your lifestyle then it's going to be easier than you trying to force it to mm -hmm. or to have to change your own life. So that's good. Um, we've also brought on a number of new volunteers over the past year. Um, we have about how many active volunteers we have? 150 active volunteers and then I believe last month they did around 1,300 hours in one month. Wow. Which is invaluable. Um, they do things from walking dogs to petting cats to bathing animals. I mean, any job that we have, they do it. It's amazing. Um, it's very, very invaluable. We've broken up our um, volunteer orientation classes into two groups. So now we have one that focuses on dog and one that focuses on cats. So now I think that's helping retain the volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a family-friendly environment. It's just, I, I see them smiling when they come in and the animals are the ones that benefit from it. And a lot of them, a lot of the dogs, which the, many of the volunteers walk dogs, and many of the dogs are getting walked more than three times a day. Yeah, so, I think it's six <laughs> to eight times a day, which helps yeah. with potty training and behavior issues. Sure. I mean, it's, it's great. Sure. And then the cat program has been enhanced, so there's some cat socialization mm -hmm. training on how to approach the kennels, how to evaluate a cat, how to play with a cat. Uh, some of them like rowdy play, like the more boisterous dogs do and mm -hmm. some are couch potatoes like you mm -hmm. mentioned and they just want to sit in the lap at the rocking chair in there and uh, be petted and then some like play on the cat porch mm -hmm. and we've enhanced that a little the bit. Catio, the catio. The like catio. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you'll when you go there you'll find the cats on the catio and they have a a series of little catwalks that mm -hmm. somebody one of our volunteers has built to enhance mm -hmm. the porch so they can climb and jump and get some outside time and uh, chase the butterflies. And get, that, <laughs> get that energy out. You know, when they're yeah. kept in, in cages, it lets them spread their spread their legs and get some great sure. fresh air. And some wise person put those butterfly bushes right next to the cat porch. They love them. And they're batting through the fence. And yeah, it's cute. So they're getting a lot of a lot of good uh, exercise and a healthy 
a healthy visit outside in a screened-in area so there's no danger. Um, some of the other things we've done is there's some new uh, cat condos in the lobby. Um, they're like three-story kennels, three or four-story mm -hmm. kennels that are a lot of fun. And uh, we've had a lot of cats come in um, in the last two weeks before this program was recorded. How many cats did you tell me have come in? As of yesterday, 183. In two weeks? In two weeks, which 183. is... 183. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we're bursting at the seams with, with cats. We definitely need fosters. Um, mm -hmm just because space is a constraint. So yeah. if anybody is willing to come in and foster, please give us a call, 615-790-5590, or shoot us an email. My email is lauraC at williamson-tn.org. Um, we definitely need somebody to foster, even if it's just for a week until we have space to put them up for adoption. Okay. But 183 cats is, usually we take in around 200 a month, and in just two weeks we've taken in 183. Sometimes they're too small to be adopted and they mm -hmm. need to be fostered for that reason. And then sometimes we have a little bit of a temporary space problem, which is mm -hmm. what you're describing now. Mm -hmm. And I know people bring large litters in at, all at one time and it is overwhelming to, mm -hmm. because we have to medicate and vaccinate um, a number of these animals immediately to keep the other rest of the cat population safe mm -hmm. from any illness that they may have brought in. So it is a huge endeavor and we do depend on our fosters so much. If they're tiny uh, kittens that can't be adopted, we sometimes ask people to foster them for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, that involves sometimes bottle feeding because they don't have a, a mother all the time. Uh, so those people are really, really dedicated. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to foster, they can just call the shelter Absolutely. and talk about that. And that would, the community does always respond when we have a need, so that's good to know. Um, now, speaking of cats, we started a trap neuter release program, which mm -hmm. is shortened. It's called TNR, mm -hmm. and that program is for what we call a feral cat, which is a cat that doesn't socialize. It might live on someone's property in a barn uh, and survives on its own, mm -hmm. chasing mice and that kind of thing. Uh, instead of uh, euthanizing those cats, which happens in some cities, mm -hmm. uh, our shelter, um, saves those cats through a TNR program. Correct. Now tell us how, what is that? We trap, neuter, and release. Correct. Um, so studies have shown that feral cats multiply more than any other animal. They say that for each person that lives in this county, there's 15 feral cats. So that's a lot that's of a cats lot. out there mm -hmm. reproducing. Right. Um, so before we were euthanizing them because they can't be socialized. They wouldn't make great house cats. They wouldn't make great pets. Um, so we developed the TNR program, which is trap, neuter, return, or trap, neuter, release. Um, people bring in feral cats. We hold them for um, three days, and then we sterilize them, give them a rabies vaccine, and ear tip them, which is the universal sign for the animal to be feral. Um, and then we return them back into the community. We have multiple caretakers that have colonies because they like their barn cats. They help eat mice. They help eat snakes. Mm -hmm. I don't like snakes, so I have my own feral cat <laughs> colony. Um, but we have some great caretakers out there that are willing to take in these extra ferals and provide care for them. And we'll provide the humane trap in the beginning if mm -hmm. you have a situation on your property where you're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can happen so quickly because they can reproduce every four months or so. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you don't stop that chain at some point, uh, you'll just be overwhelmed with mm -hmm. them. So I would encourage people to participate in that free trap, neuter, release program. Just call the shelter and say, hey, I've got a situation with, with these barn cats that I need, I need to stop the cycle. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'd be happy to help them with that. And we've recently built an, a horse barn down on some county property. We call it the Equine Housing Project mm -hmm. um, for horses. So that's another accomplishment that was due to the generosity of some of the people in the community of Leapers Fork, mm -hmm. along with uh, some students from Franklin High Schools who helped design the structure. Now, how many um, horses might come into our custody over the course of a year? I think in the past six months, we've taken in three to four horses. We also do other livestock, cows, goats. Um, every day is different. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done pigs. So this area will help us to be able to house them safely, because right now we just have the shelter, which mm -hmm. helps us house cats, dogs, kittens, puppies, right. birds. Um, now this equine housing will allow us to safely house them and care for them until they become our custody. So it's a covered structure to protect them from the weather mm -hmm. with stalls and 
feeding troughs and mm -hmm. water. Uh, understand it has a, a new thing called water recycling supplies. So yes. that's great. It's, it's green in, in many ways. Um, we've had lots of volunteers come in and little projects around the shelter where we've added new lighting. Uh, we call them sun tunnels, but they're kind of like skylights that uh, are like cylindrical. And that's been a help to be able to see the animals. Um, we've had a huge new industrial washer and dryer, which yes. was yeah, a priority because we were running machines night and day. I think we had eight, four washers and four dryers that were going 24-7 because mm -hmm. we have cat bedding and dog bedding right. and you know, volunteer aprons. So now we have one industrial washer, one industrial dryer, which is more economical and sure. better for the environment. Sure, it works great. Um, and I want to highlight here the euthanasia rate at the shelter because huge strides have been made. Though our shelter has always strived to never euthanize for space, uh, even by these other programs we've implemented, like the TNR program and uh, having a new veterinarian on staff mm -hmm. and her skills have resulted in a huge decrease in our euthanasia rate. And how does it compare to last year? Um, the combined euthanasia rate last year was 22%. So 22% of cats and dogs were euthanized due to health issues or behavior issues. This year, which we're halfway through, the combined euthanasia rate is 8%. That's great. Yeah, That's we're great. very happy. That's a statistic that we are happy to share with people, mm -hmm. and we applaud you for everything you've done to bring that down. Thank you. Um, we do have a public uh, spay neuter program at the shelter for people who make $55,000 or less can call and make an appointment to have their personal pet mm -hmm. spayed or neutered. It's sometimes unclear to people that we're talking about pets they already have, but yes, that's who we're talking about. Uh, I mentioned the Rachel Ray $100,000 challenge and during finishing up during the months of July and August, our shelter is competing with 10 other shelters across the country to save more lives during those months. We'll be out in the community with a number of events. Our theme is the Summer of Stars. We've been naming all our pets after stars. Uh, we have a red carpet that they walk and we give everybody a swag bag to take home. Uh, all the adoptions through July and August are at no fee to the adopter with an approved application. You do have to fill out the same application and the same rules apply, only your adoption fees have been paid by our generous sponsors. And I'd like to mention that our presenting sponsor is Animalia Health and Wellness Clinic and other sponsors that are helping us with the Summer of Stars are Nashville Paul Magazine, the Animal Arc Hospital, Rachel's Ribbons, the Cool Springs Animal Hospital, Franklin Synergy Bank, J.R. Root, Horse Behaviorist, First Tennessee Bank, Cause a Scene, Little House Animal Hospital, Borderland Diabetic Alert Dogs, Friends Forever, Holistic Pet, and Regency Office Products. And we thank all of them for their generous support of this challenge. It's because of them that our adoptions are, are at no fee to the adopter. We're closed on July the 4th, but on Saturday the 5th, we're going to have some special uh, motorcycles from Harley Davidson on display at the shelter. We're calling it Hogs and Dogs, <laughs> and we'll be highlighting our pity mixes and we have free popsicles. Then on Saturday, July 12th, we'll be at the Nashville Pet Expo, which is at the Nashville Fairgrounds, a fun place to go. Lots of vendors, lots of giveaways, and we'll be one of the uh, shelters out there doing adoptions on July the 12th. Then July the 19th, we'll be at Nashville Pet Products on Highway 96 by Steinmart. And on July the 26th, we'll be back at the shelter for a huge mega match event with a number of local rescue groups participating. And then we're going to Nolansville August 2nd. So we hope you will see us around the county this summer and you'll consider adopting a pet and helping us in our challenge to win some of the prize money in the ASPCA Rachel Ray $100,000 challenge. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And I hope we see many of you viewers come by the shelter. Just come by to say hi and see what we've done mm -hmm. and you might end up with a pet. <laughs> if we could talk to the animals, learn all their languages, maybe take an animal degree. If I conferred with our furry friends, man the animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squeak. What the? What? I should have thrown you away? 
OK。